you're about to learn which web hosts are the best for WordPress websites and which ones to avoid after this. Hey, welcome to ProfitCopilot.com. My name is Mick Meany and this is all about helping you to get better results online. So today I'm going to talk about your best options for hosting WordPress websites. It's a minefield, right? I know that because I've been hosting websites since 2004 and I've been hosting WordPress websites since around 2007. So way back in the early days of WordPress. So I know what the concerns are. I know what you need to be looking out for. So I'm going to show you the best web hosts for WordPress and also the ones that you need to avoid. Because what if you get stuck with poor service? You know, what if the site doesn't work? What if the downtime is pretty high? What if you have to install WordPress manually? You know, which uh, web hosts come with cPanel? What if there's no support available after you've signed up? What if you get hacked? And does the hosting company have your back? Do they take backups? So today I'm going to show you the best hosting companies in my experience. I'm going to show you which hosting companies to avoid. But listen, most web hosting reviews are kind of biased. There's an ulterior motive for the recommendations of web host because most people who review web hosts and then offer the uh, <laughs> the recommendation are actually affiliates and that sways their decision that you know they tend to recommend the the hosting companies that have the highest commission so to make sure I don't get tempted to go down that road so to keep myself honest so you know that my intentions are good I'm not going to use any affiliate links in this I'm just going to tell you everything that you need to know based on my own personal hands-on experience over the last however many years so I'm not trying to profit from this in any way so we've got three types of hosting to think about and each type of hosting environment caters to a different need so the most common one that we've got is called shared hosting and this is where they cram hundreds or even thousands of websites onto one server and everybody shares the resources and this can be problematic if you have a high traffic website i remember when uh, on a recent test we did with profit copilot i set up a test website and we, we started using the uh, the traffic methods from one of my training courses and in the first two weeks the traffic started to increase and it went to I think it was a thousand people a day and on on the uh, hosting environment that we were testing a thousand people a day caused the website to short out it caused the server to just you know screw up it couldn't handle that much traffic to that website. So this is a common problem um, with uh, shared hosting. And to be completely upfront with you, I did that as part of a marketing strategy because I wanted to show what kind of results using my traffic methods can have on a shared hosting uh, website. So <laughs> it allowed me, because we did this test for real, it allowed me to take a screenshot of the analytics and say, look, server melting traffic. These methods will, <laughs> will make, make you uh, need to upgrade your hosting account, which is a really good problem to have. So that is a result of shared hosting. And then the next one up is VPS. That's a virtual private server. So it's still on a shared hosting account, but you get more resources. You've got more room, more things to play with. So you can have uh, more plugins installed. You can have more traffic coming to your website. And that is generally the type of hosting account I use on my websites. It's a, it's a VPS because it can sustain the traffic levels that I'm throwing at it. And then the next one up is a dedicated server. And this is when you're getting really high traffic Websites. Now, I only have 
one dedicated server and there's one website on that and that website gets i mean cra crazy traffic levels you know upwards of 30,000 people a day 50,000 people occasionally occasionally we get over 100,000 people a day to that site and for that we need a dedicated server a vps won't cut it and a, a shared hosting account certainly won't cut it so th those are your three types of hosting and each one has a, serves a different need shared hosting shared resources vps a bit more resources dedicated hosting 100 percent resources and because i have multiple types of web hosting accounts i'm going to show you what you need to look out for so no matter which web host you choose pick one that has got a cpanel so this lets you install WordPress with a few clicks. That's really uh, quite important. Also check out the customer support before you sign up. So send them an email, check the response time, see what kind of detail they go into. Most likely you're going to be dealing with a sales rep. Now they will, if they know what they're doing, they will either get a tech to give them the information they need or refer you to someone who's got more knowledge. So let's get down into it and let's start with the companies you should avoid. The first one I've got for you, and this, you have to stay away from these guys, okay? It's IX Web Host. These are shockingly bad. The, the downtime that I experienced with these was really high. The support was non-existent. And also another one to avoid is, I, I, I moved from IX Web Host to iPowerWeb and I had almost the exact same experience. And the funny thing is that both are owned by the same parent company. They're called Endurance International Group, EIG. And pretty much any web host owned by EIG is to be avoided. Other web hosting companies owned by EIG, uh, Bluehost, yep, really. Fast Domain, HostGator, HostMonster, Site 5 and dozens more. You see EIG purchase good hosting companies and then they lay off the support staff and they stop investing in the technology because that company only exists to increase the profit for its shareholders and not really for providing a good customer experience. And speaking of companies to avoid, another one is called one-on-one -on -one hosting. Now, I went ahead with their WordPress hosting option and everything was fine until I tried to install a plugin. And the second that I installed Jetpack, things started to go south. So the site just stopped working and it took around three days for support to get back to me to investigate. And their solution was that I needed to upgrade to a dedicated server. So that's one to stay away from. And carrying on with the bad web host section of this, we've also got A2 hosting. Now I've used the VPS and found that the lack of features was kind of worrying. The speed wasn't very good. And to do anything worthwhile with the hosting account, I needed to have additional monthly purchases. For example, installing WordPress incurred an extra monthly fee and the support wasn't too helpful when I needed it. Next up is Inmotion Hosting. Now, these guys have got a pretty good reputation, but based on my own experience, I can't really recommend them because almost immediately, every test site that I built on their VPS got hacked, and it got hacked very quickly. I found the support to be very disorganized. I had to repeat myself to about eight different members of support staff before they took any action. And I just found that to be a bit unacceptable. However, the uptime is pretty good, but the speed of the server was kind of slow. So those are the web hosts that should be avoided, at least in my experience. Other people will have completely different experiences, I'm sure. So let's move on to the better web hosts. Let's start with CrocWeb. So I used to really love this company. And for a while, everything I had was hosted with these guys. But over the last couple of years, 
the support has been kind of lacking. I still have a dedicated server with them, and that's really because the site that I'm hosting there is Mammoth. It's got around 100,000 posts on there, and people keep contributing to that every single day. So it's a nightmare to move, and the server is fast enough, just about, for what I need it to do. But there are frequent problems, and it seems that there's only one member of support staff that actually knows what he's doing, and I have to personally request that he takes a look at the issues when they arise. Otherwise, I'm left with support staff that don't really know what they're doing or seem to care about the issues. So I would recommend them if you don't mind dealing with lazy support staff. Okay, so finding a good web hosting company is pretty difficult. We know this now, okay? But what about the best web hosting for WordPress? What are the best companies that I've used? The two that I can recommend that I've personally used and have had really good service with is Liquid Web. I found, found them to be a, an amazing company and also SiteGround. Now, at the moment, I have my most important websites hosted with SiteGround and that is because the uptime has been brilliant. The websites load fast and the support is fantastic. They make everything easy to use and they even give you free SSLs. So if you're looking for an option that doesn't break the bank, then SiteGround is the one that I recommend at the moment. That might change over time. But listen, if you want to really put your web host to the test and get more traffic than you know what to do with, then I've got a free training course for you, and that will give you three or four secret traffic methods that you probably haven't seen before, and it won't cost you a single penny. You can get that free training course when you go to profitcopilot.com slash traffic. Okay, if you found this useful, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel too. It would be awesome to have you here. Me and you will get on like a house on fire and hit that little notification bell so you get updated when I upload another video, which is going to be on Monday. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I will see you again on Monday. Take care.